Hello students, this is Raima. Welcome to the third video of control and coordination where we are going to continue our discussion about the main topics of this chapter, which includes brain and spinal cord. As you can remember in the last video, we discussed about the movements which are uh, found in the plants, which are the nastic movements. And uh, we continued with the hormones, the plant growth regulators, and then we moved on to the structure of the neuron. So let's continue. The topics that we are going to cover in this video include type of nerve cells, uh, brain, and then a spinal cord, okay? So there are basically three types of nerve cells. Uh, the sensory nerve cells, which receive the signal from the receptor organs and then transfer it to the central nervous system. Uh, which can be brain or the spinal cord, okay? The second type of nerves are the motor nerves that carry the impulse from the brain and spinal cord to the effector organ, which can be either a muscle or a gland, where the response is shown, okay? Re receptor receives the stimulus and the effector organ uh, gives the response. The nerves which connect the sensory and the motor neurons together are known as relay neurons and they are found between the neurons of the central nervous system. So there are three types of nerves, uh, nerve cells or three types of neurons, sensory, relay and motor neurons. So here is a little bit of theory where sensory neuron transmit information from sensory receptors to the CNS. Relay neurons are also known as interneurons. They transmit the information within the CNS as part of the decision-making process. Motor neurons, on the other hand, transmit, transmit information from the CNS to the effectors, which, are, which can be muscles or glands, in order to initiate a response. Now, let's start with the most important part of the nervous system, uh, basically the central nervous system, brain, okay? Then we will continue with spinal cord, which are the, both of these are part of uh, the central nervous system, okay? So the study of brain is known as encephalogy. Brain is also known as encephalon. That's why its study is known as encephalogy. And the brain is basically present in this bony uh, skull, which is also known as cranium. And uh, this uh, brain actually consists of around 100 billion neurons. So you can ima imagine the complexity uh, of our nervous system. So the functions of our body are coordinated by the nervous system, as you already know. And one such uh, type of coordination is done along with the endocrine system. So they are actually talking about the nervous coordination where the nerve impulses, they are sent to the brain and then brain gives a specific response to the effector, uh, muscle or a gland. The neuron act upon the endocrine glands and make them release a specific uh, and the required hormone that will further regulate the activity of the organs. Here, a little bit of uh, endocrine system is explained, which is uh, obviously related to the nervous system. Okay, we are going to discuss about the endocrine system in the uh, in further videos. Okay, but here we are going to focus more on the brain. So the central nervous system consists of brain and the spinal cord. These are the two parts of the CNS, central nervous system. So this is the structure of the brain. Here, guys, I want to, what I want to show you, I want to show you the olfactory bulb here and the olfactory tract, okay, which is a part of uh, the forebrain. So basically, brain, it consists of forebrain, 
okay uh, which is prosencephalon okay midbrain which is mesencephalon and the hindbrain hindbrain uh, which is rhombocephalon okay so i'm going to i'm i'm going to keep showing you the picture okay uh, for uh, uh, the parts for showing the parts okay uh, this one also i just want to start here by showing you yeah by showing you the cerebrum okay so this basically is uh, one hemisphere one cerebral hemisphere and a corpus callosum which you can see here okay this connects the left cerebral hemisphere with the right cerebral hemisphere okay where you can see these folds and the depressions okay this whole part is the cerebrum okay like i said i am going to keep showing you the pictures but first let's start with the first part of brain that is the forebrain and it is also known as prosen cephalon okay so forebrain consist of olfactory lobes okay olfactory lobes and uh, the cerebrum okay secondly it is it consists of cerebrum and thirdly it consists of dian cephalon okay olfactory lobes uh, on the anti on the anterior side okay anterior side olfactory bulbs are there okay and posteriorly on the posterior side olfactory tracts are present okay i'm going to show you the video again so i was talking about olfactory bulb on the anterior side and posterior side i was talking about the olfactory tract and this uh, olfactory lobe basically is visible in the ventral view of the brain and it is entirely uh, covered with the cerebrum okay so it is not exactly uh, completely visible then the cerebrum okay which consists of the cerebral hemispheres the left and the right cerebral hemispheres and both of them they are fixed together by a tissue known as corpus callosum okay diencephalon on the other hand it consists of a roof okay the roof is uh, the epithalamus the left and the right hand side thalami is there and the floor consists of hypothalamus okay hypothalamus is a very important uh, endocrine gland okay as we will see in the endocrine system also as we will discuss in endocrine system also hypothalamus it consists of a uh, uh, a stalk okay that is in fundibulum to which the hypophysis is connected okay hypophysis is connected that is the pituitary gland so it is uh, a pituitary gland is basically the master gland okay it secretion controls the secretion of all the other endocrine glands but it is it works under the control of hypothalamus that means the secretions of pituitary gland can only be made under the command of the secretions of hypothalamus so you can say that hypothalamus is the master of the master gland okay this i am going to Uh, discuss in uh, the endocrine system but here we are going to discuss the functions of the hypothalamus with respect to the central nervous system how it is 
uh, controlling the ner nervous uh, system activities. Okay, so these are the parts of the forebrain, olfactory lobes, cerebrum and diencephalon. Uh, then the forebrain is basically, you know, first of all, I, I would like to tell you about the lobes. Okay, the lobes of the uh, cerebrum. So first there is frontal lobe. Okay, then parietal lobe. Four lobes are there. Then there is temporal lobe. And lastly, there is occipital lobe. Okay, so this is the frontal lobe, this is the parietal lobe, this is the temporal lobe, and this is the occipital lobe. Okay, I'm just showing you again frontal, parietal, temporal, occipital lobe. These are the four lobes of our brain, of the forebrain, okay, cerebrum, basically. So according to the lobes, in each lobe, there are functional areas also. For example, uh, in the parietal lobe, there is general sensory or soma somasthetic area, okay, which is uh, the seat for general sensation like pain, touch, and temperature, okay. All the general sensations, they are associated with these three stimuli. General motor area, which is present in the frontal lobe, is associated with the with all the voluntary movements. The premotor area, which is again, uh, which is also present in the frontal lobe, is associated with the involuntary movements and. Uh, autonomic nervous system okay association area which is present in the frontal lobe it is a seat of a learning memory reasoning and creative ability Visual and auditory area, which is present in the occipital lobe, it is a seat of sight and hearing, respectively, right? A speech area for speech present in the frontal lobe and smell area, which is present in the parietal lobe, it is a site for a smell. Okay, so these are the functional areas which are present in the uh, cerebrum of our brain. With this, let's move on to the midbrain. The midbrain consists of two parts, crura cerebri. Okay, this is on the ventral side. And there is corpora quadrigemina on the dorsal side. This is C O R P O R A, corpora. Okay, I'll just write it again for your convenience. Okay, and it consists of superior colliculi, colliculi and inferior colliculi. Okay. Its functions we are going to discuss later. So on the ventral side, crura cerebri is there. And on the dorsal side of the midbrain, corpora quadrigemina is there. Superior colliculi are two in number, inferior colliculi are two in number. So these two separately are no, uh, can also be known as corpora bigemina. And these two corpora bigemina are together known as corpora quadrigemina. 
okay quadri means four bi means two so the, this is the part of midbrain yes one more thing midbrain is also known as mesencephalon okay then uh, i'll just show you the picture again okay ha huh. see corpora quadrigemina is shown here okay crura cerebri must not have been shown okay and uh, like i said some parts are not very visible and yes along with that i would like to also point out the thalamus okay which is the roof of diencephalon hypothalamus which is the floor and on the left and the right hand side sorry thalamus is the left and the right hand side and epithalamus is the roof epithalamus is not basically shown here okay and now one more thing you must have noticed this fourth ventricle okay ventricles basically there are four ventricles in our brain okay these ventricles are nothing but cavities okay and inside the cavities cerebrospinal fluid is there which uh, which protects the brain against any mechanical shocks so only one ventricle is shown here but we basically our brain has three first ventricle second ventricle third ventricle fourth ventricle okay it is they are just cavities just remember cavities okay now with this let's move on to the uh, last part of the brain that is that is hind brain also known as rhombocephalon rhombocephalon consists of three parts cerebellum medulla oblongata okay and pons veroli okay now i'll show we will spot these parts in the diagram first cerebellum is here okay it is because this is the hind brain last part of the brain okay Cere cerebellum medulla oblongata and pons veroli okay pons means bridge okay it forms a bridge between the higher uh, regions of the brain and the medulla oblongata and it is present between the uh, rest of the brain and the medulla oblongata so kind of forming a bridge cerebellum this structure is very important it has a tree like appearance that's why it is also known as arbor vitae okay arbor vitae which is known as tree of life okay cerebellum just like cerebrum has two hemispheres left cerebel uh, cerebellar hemisphere and right cerebellar uh, cerebellar hemisphere uh medulla oblongata is the second part okay which uh, then uh, you know then finally it connects to the spinal cord pons veroli it is actually forming a bridge between the higher centers of the brain and medulla oblongata okay so we are going to discuss the functions also but first i will tell you about the meninges meninges are the brain covering okay uh, basically these meninges are coverings of brain and spinal cord both so you can say that it, they are the coverings of the central nervous system so there is a bony uh, exoskeleton Uh, that is covering the brain okay cranium is covering the brain and vertebral column is covering the spinal cord so this is the first uh, covering that is protecting the brain and spinal cord but internal to that there are meninges okay these coverings also further insulate the uh, these tissues brain and spinal cord and help in protecting them against the mechanical shocks or any injuries 
so the first uh menin meanings basically okay meninges is a plural word meanings m e n i n x is a singular one okay a singular is m e n i n x okay so first meanings is paya meter this one is vascular and it closely invests the brain as you can see here okay second one is the arachnoid meter which is here it has the appearance uh, of uh, uh, of uh, um, you know web of a spider that's why it has been given the name arachnoid arachnoid is a spider arachnoid means a spider arachnoid meter is there okay there is a space between pia meter and uh, arachnoid meter which is known as the subarachnoid space and it is filled with cerebrospinal fluid okay then lastly uh, the last one is the dura meter okay which is the outermost uh, meanings pia meter is vascular arachnoid meter and dura meter are not vascular and the space that is present between Uh, the arachnoid meter and the dura meter is the subdural space so this is the sub dural space it is also filled with some fluid but that is not cere cerebrospinal fluid okay above that you can see the skull and the scalp is there okay and uh, and uh, cerebral cortex is in direct contact with the pia meter so pia meter is closely investing the brain all these three layers are covering the brain protecting it against any mechanical shocks any uh, you know uh, any kind of pressure differences that may arise okay due to puncture wounds or uh, anything uh, and uh, against any injuries also it is helpful the same thing is done by cerebrospinal fluid what is that fluid doing between these spaces it is protecting against mechanical shocks okay so here basically i wanted to write a little bit about pia meter is vascular okay then pia meter uh, and uh, between pia meter and arachnoid meter there is sub arachnoid space i am making a flow chart okay sub arachnoid space which is filled with uh, csf and then there is arachnoid meter then after arachnoid meter there is sub dural space and finally there is dura meter okay uh, this consists of fluid which is not c a uh, csf okay and dura meter outside that there is skull so these are the following uh, meninges following other meninges this is non vascular this is also non vascular okay let's move on with the functions so first we are going to start with the olfactory lobes okay what do you understand by olfactory it is related to smell right so it receives the impulses of smell okay then we have cerebrum so cerebrum has three fold functions it receives the sensory impulses one minute sensory impulses okay and send them to the brain
then it uh, sends the motor impulses from brain to the uh, effector organs okay it is also a seat of intelligence memory will emotions etc okay then let's move on to diencephalon diencephalon is a relay center for sensory impulses okay except smell it doesn't receive smell impulses then it also acts as a reflex center for muscular and glandular activities then hypothalamus is there hypothalamus uh, like i said i want to discuss you know the nervous system functions here hypothalamus is involved in homeostasis okay uh, by uh, controlling the heartbeat uh, and it does so by controlling the sugar level okay blood pressure etc so it maintains the constant internal environment in our body hypothalamus is also involved with thirst hunger uh, sexual arousal and uh, various other sensations of like pain okay uh, temperature touch etc so this is what hypothalamus is doing in the nervous system so it is not just there sitting controlling the pituitary gland it is doing much more than that continuing with the functions we are going to move on to corpora quadrigemina okay now corp corpora quadrigemina consists of superior colliculi first superior colliculi controls the movement of eyelids controls reflexes of iris and eyelids okay inferior colliculi is related to the hearing impulses okay so inferior colliculi it relays sensory information from uh, ears to the cerebrum okay then we have pleura cerebri pleura cerebris uh, it carries sensory impulses from medulla oblongata and spinal cord to to thalami okay which is the uh, left and right hand side of the diencephalon then we are going to continue with pons veruli pons veruli 
is uh, involved in uh, some aspects of respiration. Okay. And I want to keep some space for medulla oblongata. Uh, and uh, it also helps in transmitting the information from cerebellum to the, uh, sorry, of the cerebellum uh, to the other. Okay. And from medulla, basically it transfers the information from one half of the cerebellum to the other half. Okay. And from the medulla, to the higher centers of the brain. Like I said, no, it forms a bridge between medulla oblongata and higher centers of the brain. So it helps in transferring the impulses from the medulla oblongata to higher centers of the brain. Then finally, we have medulla oblongata. Medulla oblongata, it helps in controlling heartbeat, respiration, heartbeat center is there, Respiratory center is there in medulla oblongata. It also controls vomiting, coughing, sneezing, hiccuping, okay, everything, etc. So these are the functions of the various parts of the brain. I would also like to tell you uh, that, just a second. So while I was discussing this, uh, the Folds in the cerebrum of the brain are known as gyri, okay, and the depressions are known as sulci, okay. So gyri and sulci are present in the cerebrum, okay. Don't forget. Another thing is that uh, the brain consists of brain and spinal cord consist of gray matter and white matter, okay. Gray matter is uh, outside and white matter is inside in the brain and is in spinal cord it is opposite white matter is outside gray matter is inside okay which i will explain now so the next topic will be a spinal cord so here you can see the structure of the spinal cord a spinal cord uh, is uh, covered by the vertebral column it is protected by the vertebral column and just like i said uh, just like brain has meninges, the spinal cord also have the three meninges uh, and there is cerebrospinal fluid also for protecting it against the mechanical shock. There is afferent sensory information, uh, I, I mean afferent root and an efferent root, uh, which uh, uh, helps in carrying the impulses from to and from the spinal cord. Okay, You can see gray matter, how it is inside and white matter, how it is outside. Okay, and uh, in the spinal cord, okay, functions of the spinal cord. Okay, the first function of the spinal cord is that it helps in uh, conducting the sensory and motor impulses. sensory and motor impulses to and from the brain. Okay, to and from the brain. Second is it acts as a center uh, for spinal reflexes. Okay, and in this way, it is reducing brain's work. So that's it about the spinal cord. Now we are going to start with the questions. Okay, now where pons and medulla oblongata are located? So pons and medulla oblongata are located in the hindbrain. Okay, and pawns are just above the medulla oblongata. Uh, among the functions, uh, the pawns, I would like to write that it controls some aspects of
respiration two two functions i'm going to write it also transfers the impulses from medulla oblongata to higher centers of the brain okay medulla oblongata on the other hand it is controlling controls heartbeat it controls respiration okay then define nerve impulse and which structure in a neuron helps to conduct a nerve impulse towards the cell body and away from the cell body so nerve impulse is is any stimulus uh, received by uh, by the sensory organs from the external environment okay so towards the cell body then writes uh, transfer the impulse okay and away from the cell body exons do that yes so let's move on to the next question mention the structure of a human brain so human brain consist of four brain mid brain and hind brain okay four brain consist of uh, the olfactory lobes cerebrum and diencephalon okay mid brain consist of crura cerebri and uh, the corpora quadrigemina hind brain on the other hand consist of cerebellum pons veruli and medulla oblongata so this is the whole structure of the uh, the human brain okay now here we have to differentiate between exons and dendrons okay exon are unbranched dendrons on the other hand is branched okay uh, so exons are single dendrons are multiple they carry nerve impulse nerve impulse away from the cell body and then rons on the other hand they bring the impulse towards the cell body okay so these are the differences between exons and dendrons okay so here we have to name the different lobes of cerebrum and their functions also i have mentioned so frontal lobe is associated with reasoning parietal lobe is uh, associated with the perception of general sensation like pressure touch pain 
occipital with uh, with visual perception temporal is for interpreting sounds and the language we hear and formation of memories also so these are the four uh, different lobes frontal uh, parietal temporal occipital okay what are the different kinds of neurons sensory neuron okay it carries impulse uh, from the receptors to the cns okay there are relay neurons that uh, connect the sensory neurons with the motor neurons and finally there are motor neurons that carry the impulses from the cns to the effector what is the function of receptors in our body think of situation where receptors do not work properly what problems are likely to arise uh, receptors are responsible to receive the stimuli okay they receive the external stimuli okay now the receptors will not work properly in case of paralysis okay either partial or complete paralysis of the body so any kind of uh, uh, you know any kind of motor activity voluntary activity you know it is hampered uh, and uh, touch uh, signals are not received pain signals are not received okay basically uh the skin as a sensory organ is not working properly okay so you can yourself think about the problems which can arise in case a particular receptor is not working okay for example the thermoreceptor which uh, is responsible for uh, giving the signal to hypothalamus if the body temperature is going down or it is rising okay so that hypothalamus can work its way towards homeostasis means being bringing the body temperature towards normal but if the thermos receptor of your body is not working properly that means it is not receiving signal about the changes in the temperature of your body it will not send the correct signal to the hypothalamus so that the control of the temperature can be brought about this is one such problem that may arise okay uh let's move on to the next question and please keep thinking about the problems that can arise due to uh, the due to the faulty receptors in our body okay okay which part of the brain controls posture and balance of the body so this is like the easiest question cerebellum is responsible for maintaining the posture and it is also responsible for the balance of the body okay state the function of gustatory receptors they help in taste tasting okay they are present in the taste buds olfactory receptors uh, no not hearing smelling they are responsible for smelling auditory receptors help in hearing name the main thinking part of the human brain that is easy cerebrum is the main thinking part and list four major functions other than thinking of this part yes so it is involved in memory it is uh, involved in reasoning it is involved it is a part of the emotion forming process also uh our will is associated with cerebrum and emotions so beside thinking it is involved in all these things so a person can become become pretty dull you know without the proper functioning cerebrum emotions yes so let's move on brain and spinal cord are two vital organs of our body how is a body designed to protect them first of all there are bones okay bony exoskeleton brain is enclosed inside the cranium okay spinal cord on the other hand 
in the vertebral column okay and secondly there are meninges meninges are there in both the organs and yes there is csf also okay both are protecting against the mechanical shocks and injuries so guys we have reached the end of the video where i would like to thank you for watching it and uh, please 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 if you have any questions please post them on the forum so that i can answer them and stay tuned for the next video thank you